Tonight is January the 13th, 2019. I'm going to show you something that I believe is rather unique. I did look uh, around on YouTube for the uh, W series, as I'm going to call them. There is a W1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I believe, of uh, Heathkit amplifiers. This one is, I did not see one like this. This one is apparently pretty old. I think it's called a W1. See, right there it is. Let's see. Well, heck, maybe it's down right here on top. Well, there it is. You know, sometimes the the uh, hardest things to find are, are absolutely right in front of you. It's actually called a model. All I can see is A1. I guess it's called an A1. That's what it looks like. It's actually in, the, the top's in pretty good shape. But, uh... I can't, there's there's a line right there through it, so I can't quite read it. 807s. I think these were built back in the late 50s. I imagine there were still a lot of 807s and their uh, uh, counterpart, the 12 volt version of them. I think they were called a 1625 or 1626. You know, I can never remember. Anyway, a lot of military surplus from back in those days. It performs quite well. It did come without a power supply. I have the bottom to it. I'll show you underneath it. It is turned off right now. This is, It's all original. I really haven't checked much on it. Got those uh, big red capacitors. I forget who makes them. Whoops, wrong way. Sorry. There we go. Uh, it's got um, a uh, very nice little uh, peerless transformer that does indeed have screen taps, so it is UL. It's a model, uh, I can't read it without getting in front of the camera. But anyway, I got it at, a, at an estate sale for 10 bucks, but the power supply had uh, already been taken. A gentleman bought the power supply but didn't buy the amplifier. So I bought the amplifier and, and built it a power supply. This is what I uh, whipped up last night. I even had a 5V4 which is what they use in the original one. It's actually quite simple. This is a big Thordeson power transformer. A little bit of overkill. Nice UTC uh, choke. And uh, underneath it, show you underneath, not much to it. I did use 800 volt capacitors, so I don't have to worry about the uh, voltage soaring up when you first turn it on. Pretty simple. I have learned, and I've mentioned it several times, I do use these, uh, I think they're called IEC type uh, connectors, so you can disconnect the plug and the AC and move it around without having to have that darn wire hanging around all the time. Well, I'm gonna plug it in and turn it on I do have it hooked up. We'll run a couple of tests on it. There we go. Give it just a second to warm up. It actually performs quite well. I probably will do some checking of the capacitors and what have you. Uh, but I uh, wanted to go ahead and post this. We'll run it. It, it does a, a very, very good job at 15 watts. It'll actually do 20 in the mid uh, frequency range. So let me turn the camera around here slowly, not to make everybody dizzy here, and point it up here at the major items. Let's see, we have to um, we have to see about three things at the same time. We look at it here on the oscilloscope. Let's see, I believe if I turn this off, it'll get better. Yeah. We naturally want to see uh, a trace to see what, what that's going to look like. This is power. It's actually putting out 10 watts right now. And uh, this is frequency, 30 hertz. I believe you can see all of that. Uh, don't, you can't see THD though, can you? Well, you can now. Up here's THD. It's bouncing around a little bit. I think at real low frequency it's got some hum on it, so there may be some uh, bad capacitors in it. Uh, that electrolytic is original. Don't own it that little bitty one, so it may or may not be doing its job. 
But there we go at 9 watts. It's doing 0.7%. Uh, if we crank it up to, let's say, 15 watts, let's make it a good 15. At 30 hertz, we're doing the low end of it right now. So we get 0.7%. If we run it all the way up to 20 watts, I think that's about at the 1% level at 30 hertz. Doesn't do 20 quite as well as, as we might like, but uh, we'll crank it down and I'll show you what it does at, at 20 hertz. The other way. There it is at about 20. And it still does 20 watts. Torsion goes up, kind of bounces around there. I don't really see too many too many anomalies in the in the sine wave. It's far about all these wires in the way, but I don't know how to I don't know how to keep them. There we go. That'll help. Let's examine the sine wave here and see how it turns out. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I don't see it flat topping. I don't see any. Uh, looks really good at 20 watts, at 20 hertz even. As you can see, it's doing extremely well. I have had it on for quite some time, so maybe some things have dried out in it. Maybe it got better. It's actually performing better now than it was. Um, 20 kilohertz. It's down ever so slightly if you do 10 times the log of that power ratio, 19.62 to the 20. See, it's up at 5% THD at 20 watts. Yeah, you can you can see that on the uh, oscilloscope. That that's not the prettiest thing, but uh, that that's okay. I think a lot of these amplifiers are are best rated at like 30 hertz to 15 kilohertz. But I believe if we turn the power down to about 15 watts, I believe it gets a whole lot better. Yeah, there you go. See, got a really nice looking. And the, uh, the THD went down to 0.6%. Uh, very nice. Actually performs very well. So I'm really pleased with it. I think it's got about 480 volts on the uh, plate coming out of this little, uh, out of this little uh, power supply that I put together quickly last night. I will be hooking it up and listening to it. I don't listen to things like I like I used to so much because I have so much of it and I just repair it and measure it and and, and do more and you know make more. Uh, let me show you some other things that I've done. Uh, just the other day I uh, posted this guy right here which is a um, little um, let me take this off the I, I can take it off the stand now I can show things so much better if I can move the camera around this is a uh, UTC uh, separate power supply I did take the big components off as I mentioned in, in an earlier video painted them the nice wrinkle paint let them dry good then I uh, reassembled it underneath this is not actually my amplifier. It has some absolutely beautiful capacitors in it. Aren't those capacitors nice right there? So I rewired that. I, the only thing that I really changed about it is I did put a bleeder resistor on it because uh, I noticed that when I turned this thing on and then turned it off, it did not bleed down and it's sitting up there with no load around 600 volts. So that could, uh, you know, really, that could really hurt. Everything is grounded over here to one point where my thumb is. This little ground strap, I left that one on there. It's grounded. They, they made a, a hole in the chassis. They banged out a hole and then, uh, you know, made a tab there to solder to. So all the grounds are soldered to that one point. That's a very good idea. You can do a, a bus if you want it, but you don't have to. And then this is the, uh, just a gorgeous little, uh, uh, UTC W10 and I made the comment the other night I'll never see one of these on my workbench again so well I got a surprise for you let me get over here and I'll show you something that showed up today what about a second one <laughs> there's a second one 
sent to me by my good friend in, in Kentucky to uh, to mess with. I tell you, I don't know. There's there's a a pair of these guys. Now this one is wired. See the sockets here, are octal sockets, so they're made for 6S N7s. Uh, these sockets right here are loctal, so they're made for 7 N7s. But they're the same thing. I never thought I'd see a pair of these guys together. A pair of these little beauties. I mean, that's a lot of iron for for a, for 20 watts, but it's a beautiful 20 watts. So I think that's about it. I will show you one other thing here, just keep the video nice and short. Uh, I sh I've shown this amplifier so many times. I did move the James transformer out. I got a pair of them up here. These two guys are the James. Here's some more UTC ones. I think these are both LS 57s, or I can't remember their number sometime. But anyway, um, the LS uh, 57 is on the back here. I will be documenting that soon. Um, and I bought in a pair of. Uh, gold line tubes. I did have to do something that I run this transformer right here half of it is a 5U4 and the other half of the bridge are solid state rectifiers well the voltage with no load on it was soaring up really high so let me show you what I built into this thing. I sure don't want to drop it but I gotta here I gotta I gotta get a hold of this thing with one hand really good and I'll show you what I built into it. It's kind of unique see that little uh delay relay tube over there I put that across the primary so it warms up and then it pulls in this relay and I use one contact of the relay to hold it because when these uh, little uh, delay relay tubes touch they're kind of sensitive you know the resistance is high for a second and it, and it makes the wants to make the uh, the relay buzz a little bit until I put uh, use like I say one of the contacts as, as, to hold it and then uh, what that does, that little delay relay and a genuine relay allows it to warm, allows all the filaments to warm up before applying the high voltage. And when the high voltage comes on, uh, it 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 doesn't exceed the uh, the rating of the capacitors. That's always kind of a problem, even in these kinds of amplifiers, because you know even if you take these kind of capacitors like this. These are nice uh, capacitors. I think they're even made in the US, but see they have a 525 volt rating. But if you're running 480 to 500 volts on the plates of your uh, 6L6 is even as little as 450, when you first turn it on, especially if it's solid state or even if it's a 5U4, the, the plate voltage will come up really quick. And um, much quicker than the you know, then the filaments of the tubes will come up, so the power supply will come up without a load. And I know that that was a particular problem that was complained about uh, at one time about the Dynaco, especially like the Dynaco Mark III, and it would uh, exceed the 525 volt rating. I guess they lasted. I guess you can exceed it for a very short time, but you really don't want to do that if you can help it. Anyway, you can use the delay relay. You can do whatever you got to do. To do your best to keep it from uh, from soaring, but anyway, there's a. Uh, I just think this is a little dandy amplifier. I'm really pleased with that Peerless transformer. It's in even the the label is in beautiful shape. Like I say, with the UL taps and everything. Look at there. This is starting to come up. I've got to I got to glue it back down. I have to. I try to be very careful and and uh, take care of my stuff like this and. Somebody some other day might want it. I've also got the bottom for it. I just got the bottom off at the moment. So there you go. There's a fancy dandy little uh, uh, Heath kit. Again, whatever it says there, A1. Is it WA1? I'm not sure where the wrinkle happens to be in exactly the wrong place. And, uh, and a pair of UTC W10s. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and Stay safe around your high voltage.